welcome back to our channel. On this week's episode, we are doing a bit of a throwback. I was planning on making this video about Willa's first heat, but it lasted over a month and honestly, it was really tough to manage and by the end of it, we just didn't want to think about it anymore. Um, and then we went straight into planning getting her spayed, so I think this video just went off of my radar for a bit. But a lot of you have been asking about your pup's first heat and what to expect and how that plays into your decision about getting your pup spayed. So I'm going to do my best to review all of the major milestones that we went through with Willa and some tips I have that we learned along the way. Before I dive in, make sure to like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and leave us a note in the comments, especially if you have more tips for people. This community has been so good to me with your wealth of knowledge, and I'm really happy to share it with all of you. All right, let's dive in. Okay, so the first thing we noticed was about a month before Willa actually went into heat, her vulva slowly became more and more swollen. Then we noticed her nipples swelled up a bit as well. When she was in heat, it became, her vulva became really swollen and stayed that way for about another month, even after her heat had completed. And honestly, her nipples never really went back to their normal size. They stayed a bit longer than they were before. And this is a super normal part of the reproductive process, but keep an eye on it to ensure that it doesn't become excessively swollen or infected. But the swelling is definitely your first indication that your pup is becoming a woman. All right, and now the bleeding begins. Because of her swelling, we knew that it was coming. She started bleeding at 10 months, so she was swollen at about nine months and then continued being really swollen up until 11 months. So the bleeding began right in the middle of that period. The bleeding quantity was more than both of us expected. We both had pups before, but they were smaller dogs. And after some research, I did find that smaller dogs generally have lighter bleeding during their heat cycle, while larger dogs may experience a more substantial bleeding. And Willa definitely bled so much. If we ever left her without a diaper on, there would be blood drips everywhere, even if it was just for a few seconds. And I had my small pup growing up and we did not really see those like drips of blood around the house. Whereas with Willa as a medium sized dog, we saw so many drips of blood around the house. So just keep in mind, the bigger the dog that you have, the larger, more substantial amount of blood that you can expect during their heat, especially their first heat when they're going through it for the first time. We bought these washable diapers that came in packages of two and then we covered our couch in blankets. Yes. Ready? Catch. So a couple more important things to note about the differences between smaller and larger breeds during their first heat. Smaller dog breeds typically reach sexual maturity earlier than larger breeds. So smaller dogs may experience their first heat cycle as early as six months of age while larger breeds may not have their first heat until they are 12 to even 24 months old. So Willa was definitely early on that, but she is a medium sized dog. So the bigger dog that you get, you might be looking at into their first like, two years. And the next thing to know is the duration of the heat cycle can vary between smaller and larger dogs. In general, the heat cycle for smaller breeds lasts about two to three weeks, while larger breeds may have a heat cycle that lasts three to four weeks. And with Willa, this is where I don't understand because larger breeds are three to four, but Willa was five weeks long. Her period lasted forever. So we honestly could not wait for it to be over and it felt like it took forever, especially if, uh, compared to the usual amount that I am used to of one week for myself. Um, five weeks just seemed absurd, but we got through it. And yeah, there was a lot of learning experiences along the way. It's crazy, I've never really noticed a behavior change in Willa, only when she was on drugs after her spade surgery. And even then the next day she was back to her normal self. But I've chatted with tons of people on our walks and I've heard 
crazy stories about the behavior changes. So I know that this is a normal occurrence. So definitely expect this if you have a pup going through this, especially if you have a girl and a boy at home. Both of their behaviors may change during this period because it's a major change for both of them. So be aware that your dog's behavior may change during heat. She may become more restless, anxious, or even clingy. Some dogs may exhibit increased aggression or become more attention seeker. So be patient and understanding during this time and provide her with extra love and attention. One of the biggest issues was the fact that we are in an apartment. So every time we go outside for a walk, it involves other dogs. I kept Willa on leash for about two months while she was swollen and then in heat because there are other dogs on our same path and the same schedule who have not been neutered. So on this walk, you guys know Willa's off leash running around for our morning run and as well as our afternoon walk. She goes off leash. I know these pups, I chat with their owners and we discuss the fact that the boys are not neutered, so I knew this. And these males will be attracted to your dog while she is in heat, even from a distance. So you need to be vigilant while taking her outside and ensure that she is not in contact with other males. It's important to prevent any unplanned pregnancies and potential risks associated to them. So many people have asked me about why we got Willa spayed, and I've said it was actually in our contract with our breeder and the fact that Willa can never get pregnant. So it's really important for us to be extremely mindful of the possibility of this on our walks because every dog, even the girls, came to sniff and lick because they all know what's up. So if you are a lucky duck and you have a backyard, make sure to supervise during this time. During her heat cycle, it's crucial to keep your dog supervised, especially when she's outside. Dogs in heat are more likely to roam and try to find a mate. So keeping her on leash and ensuring she's always under your watchful eye will help prevent any unwanted encounters. I used to live in a small town and when my family dog was in heat, this massive German Shepherd would jump our fence and come after her. These memories have literally stuck with me decades later. So it's insane how far male pups will go to find your girl. So just make sure to be watching at all times, especially when they're outside if it's in your backyard. Lastly, and an important segue from being in heat to one of your guys' main concerns, spaying. I was surprised how many of you questioned our decision about this. Most dog owners I've met here in Vancouver get their dogs spayed after their first heat, the same way that we did. But lots of you questioned this and wanted to know why we did it on the timeline that we did. And honestly, after the first heat, it was so long and it was so much to manage that it was kind of a no brainer. Second piece, as I've said before, it is in our contract that Willa cannot get pregnant. So we definitely had to get her spayed as soon as we can. And for health reasons, it's important to do that after the first heat. Thirdly, as you guys know, we live in an apartment in Vancouver. So <laughs> an unplanned pregnancy is just not a responsible decision for us. Again, if you have a big house and a yard, maybe an unplanned pregnancy is okay. But for someone that lives in a 900 square foot apartment, as much as I'd love to have a bunch of Vishla puppies running around, we definitely couldn't do that. And we'd be breaking a legal contract. So just not in the cards for us. So if you do not intend on breeding your dog, spaying is highly recommended. Spaying not only prevents unwanted pregnancies, but it also provides long-term health benefits, including reduced yes. risk of certain yes. cancers. Consult with your veterinarian about the appropriate time for spaying, as it's generally best to wait until after her first heat cycle has ended. One last thing I need to call out that occurred after Willa's heat is her discharge. It is the clear gooey liquid that comes from her vagina. It is pretty stinky. So when she has discharge and starts to lick, if she is on furniture, it will really stink it up. 
So we try to catch the goo right away and wipe it away with a paper towel or a Kleenex, but unfortunately, if we don't get to it, there is no other way to get rid of the smell other than yeah. shampooing the couch. I know it sucks, but this is just part of being a woman. All right, that's all we've got for you this week. Remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and as always, I appreciate all of you, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> okay, ready?